Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quintic equation without using the quintic formula. Do you know why? Okay, we'll talk about it in a little bit. So we have x to the fifth power plus 31 over 16 times x plus one equals zero. And we're gonna be solving this equation and we're gonna be approaching it from different angles. And let's go ahead and talk about the quintic formula, so on and so forth. Okay, first step. I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by 32. Why not 16? Because 16 will allow you to get rid of the denominator, so it should be good, right? No. I want a number that is a fifth power, and that happens to be 32. And 32 is nice because it's divisible by 16. So if I divide, I mean multiply everything by 32, I should be getting something like this. And 16 goes into 32 twice, and everything looks good. Awesome. After multiplying, we get the following. 32x to the fifth power plus 62x plus 32 equals 0. What, what a nice equation. There seems to be some type of symmetry, but that's not the case. Let me tell you that. Here's what we're going to do. Because 32 is a fifth power, I can write 32x to the fifth as... 2x quantity to the fifth power. You see that? And of course, by following the same pattern, I do need a 2x, so I should multiply it by 31. And then 32 is a constant, too bad. It's going to stay like that. Now, notice that, hopefully it's obvious, that we should substitute, change variables. How about calling this y? And don't question y. So now we have 2x equals y. Let's take note on that one. And this gives us y to the fifth power plus 31y plus 32 equals zero. Remember, I told you that I was going to talk about two different approaches. Yes, but one of them seems to be better than the other, right? Now, I told you that I was also going to solve this without using the quintic formula. Why? Do you know why? Because quintic formula does not exist. Too bad, right? There is no hexic. There is no septic. Unfortunately, starting with the fifth powers, we have no solution. I mean, there are cases where you have a solution, obviously, if you had x to the fifth equals three, then you would have a solution, obviously, right? This is too trivial. But in general, you don't have a quintic formula like the quadratic, the cubic, and the quartic. Trust me, you don't even want to know what the quartic formula looks like because it's ugly, disgusting, super long. Check on Wikipedia and, and I warn you, it's huge. Okay. So let's go ahead and see how we can approach this problem. First of all, notice that we can use rational root theorem if there are any rational roots. If there are no rational roots, then we're in big trouble. Houston, we have a problem. So how do you approach it? Well, since this is monic, which means the coefficient of y to the fifth, the leading coefficient is one. That's a good thing in most of the time we should look at factors of 32. But 32 is a power of 2. It's 2 to the fifth power. So its divisors or factors are also powers of 2 because think about it. 3 can't go into it. Any other prime can't go into it. So only 2 can go into it or powers of 2. So it's going to be like 1. And of course, you have to consider plus minus. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. Wow. That's like... 12 choices. Good luck with that. You probably know that positive numbers are not going to work. Do you know why? Because think about it. Positive plus a positive plus a positive cannot be zero. So we can only consider negative. Still, there are too many options. You don't like that, do you? I mean, you'd be my guest if you want to try it and eventually you're going to find a number. Yes, we're going to find that number, but there's a much, much easier way particularly for these kinds of problems, because this one is a special polynomial. Remember what I've been telling you all the time. If you have a polynomial equation, always check these two things first. What's the first one? Check for the sum of the coefficients. If the sum of the coefficients is zero, that means one is a solution, because you find the sum of coefficients by replacing the variable one. I mean, the answer is so obvious, right? What about the second one? The second one is about negative one. You uh, add the odds and the evens separately, like kind of like a divisible to rule for 11, sort of, alternating. And you check the sums. What do I mean by odds and evens? Here's what I'm talking about. What's the coefficient of y to the fifth power? Because 5 is an odd number. 
and one is an odd number, so these two should be added. What about an even? y to the power zero would be considered even, so you should add that separately. So is it true that one plus 31 is equal to 32? Yes, I think everybody would say yes to that, right? Even like a kindergartner, probably. Hopefully, I don't know, maybe not. But you can see that the odds are equal to the sum of the odds are equal to the sum of the evens, which means y equals negative one is a solution. Awesome. But what does that imply? Because we're not looking for y. Why are we not looking for y? Because we're looking for x. Okay, there's a joke about um, stop asking about your x, uh, dear algebra, something, something. You probably know it, but if not, look it up. It's really funny. Why is negative one? That implies two x is equal to negative one, which means x is equal to negative one half. Ta da da da. We found a rational solution. Thanks to the rational root theorem. We didn't use it, but we could have found it with the rational root theorem as well. So what, where do we go from here? Once we know that x is equal to negative one half, we could definitely factor it. But there's an easy way to do it if you just consider the y world, and you can just do the following. Since y equals negative one is a solution, right? So I can kind of manipulate this and notice that 32 is 31 plus one. Could I use that fact? Probably, let's try this. Y to the fifth plus one and 31, Y plus 31. Yay, it seems to be working because this is factorable. This is sum of two fifth powers. The second factor is kind of long, but bear with me. It's gonna look like this. And then this one is just 31. And then we can just go ahead and factor out Y plus one. That's a common factor. And now the second factor becomes y to the fourth minus y to the third plus y squared minus y plus one plus 31, that would be 32. Now, we are able to get y equals negative one from here or x equals negative one half, but what about this one? That's a quartic and, oops, did I write y to the fourth twice? Sorry about that. That's supposed to be y to the third power. Uh-oh, I picked the highlighter instead of the eraser. I don't know why. So this should be y to the third power that comes from here. And then you can get y equals negative one. The other one is cortic, so you kind of need to solve it. I don't think you want to do it. Let Wolfram Alpha do that for you, okay? But that's the main idea. Again, there's no quintic formula. That's why we use this strategy to solve it. And not all quintics are solvable, obviously. But guess what? The solution we found will satisfy the original problem. And you should kind of be suspicious because you know why? Whenever you see 31, always think of it as 32 minus one, and this should give you two minus one over 16, and then distribute it, and hopefully you'll get somewhere from there. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.